again. So yesterday you learned about erosion and what it is and what causes it and that a lot of erosion is caused by water and rain and water coming down and um, affecting the soil so that it creates these canyons and moves the earth around. Um, so today we're going to play a little bit more um, with uh, water erosion and see if there are things that we can do to prevent it. So even um, right now with all of the rain that we've been having, you can walk around your yard and find examples of erosion in your yard. Um, and we're going to see if you can come up with solutions to help prevent these areas of erosion. So the first thing you need to ask yourself, I guess, is why is this necessary? Why are we even concerned with erosion happening? And why do we want to prevent it? As you saw yesterday, that just a little bit of rainfall can create um, quite some serious canyons and rivers. And in some uh, scenarios, that's really dangerous. Um, you know, we have a lot of houses in um, certain areas that are built at the bottom of cliffs or even on cliffs. And if we're not concerned with erosion, this can lead to some serious implications. Even if you look around your house and you see areas of erosion around your yard, um, you might notice that um, these things, if left um, unattended, can become hazardous to your house or your garden or whatever else it's affecting. So um, today we are going to, again, look at ways that we can slow or prevent um, water erosion from happening. So we're gonna utilize the same sand material that you used yesterday, which again was um, three parts cornmeal to one part salt and um, one part water. But again, any kind of sand um, like material will work. So I'm gonna create my mounds again with my um, sandy substance over here. I'm just creating a little hill, um, hill-like area. And then I'm just going to fill it in with the rest of my sand here. Basically, you could do whatever you want. Um, we just want one um, somewhat formed hill. Okay, then I'm going to prop up my hill so that I have this nice slope going on for um, when I recreate my rain. So, what are some things that you can think of that we can use to help prevent erosion? Now remember, we're talking about water erosion, so we're talking about um, uh, soil and land moving in a downward um, fashion or moving um, to the side, uh, such as um, creating canyons or uh, landslides, mudslides, that kind of thing. So I have my setup here. I'll turn it so that you guys can see it a little bit better for my simulated rain. Okay, so then I'm going to pour the water into my cup to simulate the rainfall again. Okay. And if you can see, at first not much happens where the waters just kind of create a crater, a hole. And I'm going to post a, um, some information to go along with this experiment um, where you can learn more about the terminology and um, different types of water erosions um, and what is actually happening. So if I add a little bit more water, you could see, maybe you can't really see, you can see that it's starting to create a canyon and a river. So this is what we want to prevent happening. This mudslide um, pool at the bottom of 
our mountain. We wanna try and contain that water and contain that sand um, to prevent these, um, this erosion from happening. So I'm gonna put my camera back up here. There we go. All right, so some things that occur in nature that maybe we can try um, to prevent this erosion from happening are, um, we have rocks that we can use. So I want you to think of how we can use the rocks and why those might be a useful tool to prevent erosion. The other thing we could use um, that we see a lot in nature are plants um, and trees. And what do those have um, particularly in the ground that might help prevent erosion. Um, so some tools that I gathered um, to work with um, my ideas are some popsicle sticks that I might use as trees or plants. I grabbed some um, cotton balls. And hopefully these are all things that you guys have around your house, but I grabbed some cotton balls that I was thinking that I might use these as the root system to my trees. So where do I find roots? How would I put that in my experiment that might help um, uh, prevent erosion? Um, I also grabbed some rocks that I can use to um, uh, put around my mountain and figure out the best places to put all of these items and um, how they would be best utilized. Um, you can also think of the popsicle sticks as a fencing or, um, you know, the, the ideas are endless and really you can use anything that you find around your house, but I want you to think about like whatever you find around the house, I want you to think of what is this simulating in real life? For example, like my popsicle sticks, I'm pretending they're trees. Um, and then I want you to think about how you can use these materials, um, whether they're the material, like the actual popsicle sticks that you found in your house or the, the pretend materials, such as um, popsicle sticks being trees, to prevent some of these areas of erosion around your house. Um, uh, the other questions I want you to think about are, um, uh, maybe I, I asked this already, but another question would be, what would cause erosion to worsen? Okay, so we saw that light rainfall created this um, canyon and this crater in my mountain. What maybe might um, cause erosion to be a little bit worse? Or what other things besides just rain, what other weather do we have that um, might also contribute to erosion? Um, so just some questions to ask yourself. Again, um, some things that you can play around with and also a way for you to hopefully tie this into something that um, you might have noticed around your house. Um, I will post some uh, information that you could do some research on some of these topics, and I hope you have fun and you're enjoying your time off. I will see you tomorrow.